Milton here of Who Jack and Pippi, and uh, today I want to help you with your research. Um, many of you have been doing scientific research, you know, for essays and stuff, and you may not know where to go or even where to start when you're doing your research. Well, I'd like to help you with that. Um, I've made uh, science documentaries for years and years for Discovery, the Discovery Channel, as well as National Geographic. And over the years, I've had to figure out where's the good stuff written up in a language I can understand rather than just being burdened down with statistics. Uh, so I want to introduce you to some of the sources that I've found are the most useful. There's three magazines you've got to start with. Um, Scientific American, which has been around for like 125 years. Uh, Discover Magazine and New Scientist. Now, Scientific American, what's good about it is the articles are often written by the scientists themselves. The people who actually made the discoveries are writing the articles. Uh, that can mean that you get uh, the word straight from the horse's mouth. It can also mean sometimes the articles are a little bit complicated, but it varies. Um, and they also have articles written by regular journalists there. Um, Discover Magazine is usually written just by journalists, so it's easier to read. It tends to be um, maybe a little less stolid than Scientific American. Um, they often cover uh, some of the same material, but in different ways, Discover Magazine being a little hipper about it, um, but uh, an excellent source of information about uh, sexy scientific topics. And New Scientist, um, it actually is a weekly from Britain. These other two are monthlies. So New Scientist tends to keep on top of every single new scientific discovery, which they think the general public will be interested in. Um, the only thing you have to watch out for uh, for that is that just because a scientific discovery is announced doesn't mean that other scientists are going to be able to back it up and do that same experiment and get the same results. So sometimes something sounds really sexy in a press release, which you find a new scientist, and then a year later everybody says, oh no, actually we were kind of wrong about that. Um, but New Scientist balances new scientific announcements with um, uh, very good articles looking at longer term trends in science, as well as often doing really good articles about the future of uh, what science should be looking at. So, an excellent resource. Now, you can get to all three of these through their websites. I'm going to put up their website addresses here. Um, the, uh, the extent to which you can actually search uh, their archives is up to each one of them, and you probably can't get full archive search in any of them. So you may want to go uh, to your public library, use your library card, and see what online databases they have access to. Um, you can often do this from home and get like full access to all three of these. Um, and I've done another video about how to use your library card to get onto databases, so watch that one. Um, the other option uh, when you're doing this kind of research is uh, there's a couple of other uh, places that I like to go. If you want a um, more considered, longer term view of things, that's closer to what scientists are doing themselves, then there are two journals you've got to check out, okay? Nature and Science. Nature is from Britain, Science is from the United States. These are the two journals that scientists want to be published in. If they've made a discovery, this is where they want to be published. So a lot of the uh, main articles will be too hardcore for basically any of us mortals, aside from, you know, trained scientists. I mean, the main articles can be heavy duty statistics, but, the, um, there is a very good section in both of them where uh, they have their staff writers write up uh, what's going on in science and the sort of backstory to the latest discoveries and the latest breaking papers. So I highly recommend going there. I found a lot of really good stuff there. So those are just some of the sources which I look at when I start to do um, uh, scientific research. One other that I should mention before I go is the New York Times. Um, the New York Times has an excellent science section. I believe they still do uh, a, an actual science section on Tuesdays. Um, uh, they, have, they cover most of the important science stories uh, that you're ever going to care about. Um, they can do longer, longer term view studies of things, um, and they're just the, the quality of the journalism is just excellent. So uh, if you're looking for an easily readable entry into a particular uh, scientific question, I would go to the New York Times first and just search for it. Just, uh, they've got an excellent search engine, and again, whether you can get into their full archives will depend on how you're accessing it. If you have a subscription to the New York Times, that automatically uh, gives you access. You just have to put in your subscription information. If you don't, um, again, your library card can help you uh, get access to databases that the New York Times is um, included in. 
And then the other thing is, of course, you could just go to the library and look at old copies of the New York Times. But New York Times has been writing about this for a very long time, so it's good if you can scroll back many, many years, and the best way to do that is electronically. So these are the magazines uh, and journals I would suggest starting with, and if, if you start there, you will almost certainly find um, something about what you're looking at. Good luck.